Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this example here. So it's asking us to write the quadratic function in the transformation form, y equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. So let's see how we can go ahead and rewrite this from the standard form into the transformation form. So our function here is y equals negative 3x squared plus 5x minus 1. So let's take a look at how we can rewrite it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually go ahead and factor out the negative 3 from these first two terms. So that will give us negative 3 on the outside. I'm left behind with x squared. Now, since this is negative 3, negative 3 does not go into 5 directly. That means that's going to be plus 5x, and we just end up dividing it by negative 3, and of course leave this negative 1 on the outside. So let's clean this up a little bit. I've got negative 3 on the outside. I've got x squared, positive and negative, will become negative 5 thirds x, and then I've got minus 1. Now we need to complete our square, so we take this, remember this is our a term, this is our b term. So to complete the square, it's b divided by 2, and we take a square on that whole thing, right? So this is going to be 5 over 3. Instead of dividing it by 2, we can also multiply by 1 half and take a square on that whole thing. So when I multiply this, I get 5 times 1, which is 5, 3 times 2, which is 6, and I'm taking this to the second power, which will become, of course, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36. So that means we are going to add 25 over 36 to complete our square, but also to make sure that we do not change the value of our function, or equation in this case, when we add 25 over 36, we also subtract it at the same time so that we maintain the value of our function, okay? Now, to complete the square, I only need the first three terms from our parentheses, which means we need to take this negative 25 and bring it outside. And to do that, we'll, of course, need to take negative 25 over 36 and multiply it with negative 3 on the outside. So let's go ahead and write down the parts that we need. So that's negative 3. I need x squared minus 5 over 3x plus 25 over 36. And then I'm going to get rid of the negative 25 over uh, 36 by multiplying it with negative 3. So negative times negative will become positive, and we are, of course, doing multiplication here. If it helps, you can write that guy down as negative 3 over 1. So this will be, like I said, negative times negative will become positive. 3 goes in itself once. 3 goes into 36 12 times. So this guy ends up becoming 25 over 12 when it comes on the outside, and then we still have that negative 1 at the end. Okay, now we'll need to go ahead and combine these two terms, and then of course we'll need to factor this term here. So we should have negative 3. This guy is going to factor into the x squared will of course become x, since I have a negative on the middle term and positive on the constant term, my factor will have a negative sign here. And then remember, when you're trying to factor this expression here, you just need to go back and look at the uh, completing the square calculation that we did. And right before we did our square to get 25 over 36, we had 5 over 6. So that 5 over 6 is what this perfect square trinomial 
factors into. And you can verify this really easily. Take your negative 5 over 6 and multiply it with itself. So we multiply negative 5, 6 with negative 5, 6. Negative and negative makes it positive. 5 times 5 is 25. 6 times 6 is 36, which gives us our constant term. If I add negative 5, 6 with itself, same denominator, so I'm adding negative 5 and negative 5, which brings us negative 10. If I reduce that, uh, which will go by 2, I will end up with negative 5 thirds, which gives me my middle term. So we know this factoring is going to be correct. Now let's go ahead and add our 25 over 12 with negative 1, which of course means we need to find a common denominator. So we multiply this guy by 12, and we end up getting 25 over 12 from here. This guy becomes 12 over 12, same denominator. So we can now combine our numerator. So that's going to be 25 minus 12, which will of course end up giving us 13. So here we end up getting positive 13 over 12. Okay, so you will notice this is going to be our A term. This is our H and this is our K term. And we went from a standard form to a transformation form. All right, let's go back to our my math lab and let's take a look at it. Okay. So let's type this in negative three inside the parentheses we had x minus five six and this was to the second power and then we are adding 13 over 12. So let's check that and you will see we end up getting this correct and as far as graphing this function goes let's do this. We are graphing a parabola since this is a quadratic term. Let's just click on the graph and now we actually need to type in how our graph is transforming. So of course, you can see that we have a stretching factor of three. So we need to type in three for our stretching and shrinking. There is a vertical translation that's happening, which is coming from the 13 over 12. So we need to type that in. We are translating our graph by five, six to the right. So that's positive. 5, 6, and then of course that negative sign on our 3 is telling us that we are reflecting our graph in the negative, I mean in the x-axis. So you should notice that our graph has now moved to the right by 5 6 of a unit. We have stretched it by um, 3. We have a reflection but you will notice my vertical translation ended up becoming negative 13 over 12. So I wanna make sure I make that positive because our graph is moving up and not down. So we should have a positive three for the stretching and shrinking. Vertical translation should be 30, 13 over 12. Horizontal translation should be positive five over six and then we are reflecting this in the X axis. So let's save it and we check our answer again. And you will see that this is working out for us. So this is how you go about doing 3.1.19.